This episode of Weekly Weird News is sponsored by Mac Weldon and by HelloFresh. Well, let's start things off this week by once again providing an update on a story that has fascinated us for the past week. Gone too soon, I say. Yeah, the mysterious 11-foot-tall stainless steel monolith discovered in a remote part of the Utah wilderness, which has apparently just been sitting out there waiting to be discovered for around five years. No one knows how it got there or who put it there, though uh, based on close-ups taken by visitors who ventured out to it, it probably wasn't aliens. Yeah. We can say with some certainty that it was human. Yes. And now it's gone. Poof. Um, yeah. And no, while government officials had planned to remove it to avoid too many people making the dangerous journey out to go see it, uh, it seems that just as mysteriously as it appeared, the Utah monolith has vanished and no one knows who took it. Yeah. It's just gone. Again, based on our luck with these videos getting posted, by the time this video goes up, there's going to be a TikTok video of someone loading it into a truck and driving it yeah. away. Or it'll making be back. us look very stupid. Yeah, maybe it takes Sundays off. We don't yeah, know. no, it just tucks into the earth. Yeah. It's the day of rest, mm -hmm. and then it pops back out. Yeah. Uh, an official statement from the Bureau of Land Management on Saturday, it reads as follows. We have received credible reports that the illegally installed structure, referred heretofore as the monolith, <laughs> has been removed from Bureau of Land Management public lands by an unknown party. The BLM did not remove the structure, which is considered private property. We do not investigate crimes involving private property, which are handled by the local sheriff's office. The structure has received international and national attention, and we received reports that a person or group removed it on the evening of November 27th. The perfect crime. I, I loved reading these posts because uh, either, either a lot of people are really good at making this joke or a lot of people do seem to actually think that the U.S. government has given a bunch of land to the Black Lives Matter movement. I love it. <laughs> and Wait, why is it BLM land? <laughs> this isn't fair. Uh, it's great. Yeah. yeah. It uh, really, really uh, allows people to tell on themselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, of course, plenty of people still made the trip out to the site of the monolith, which is a long and difficult trip to make. But what else are you doing? And they did it not knowing that it was already gone. So there's a bunch of pictures now of people just standing around a pile of small stones placed where the metal monolith used to be. You know, one of those, uh, they should put one of those like tall glass uh, Mother Mary candles. Yeah. <laughs> like it's somewhere like where someone got shot. Yeah. yeah just uh, a nice little uh, thing to represent what Make was that there. trip out in the middle of fucking nowhere to see a whole bunch of nothing. Yeah. As for what happened to it, uh, Utah reporter Brian Schnee of Fox 13 spoke to a guy who may have reached the site just after it was removed and says that the, he saw a pickup truck leaving the area while he was entering mm. with what looked like a large object in the truck bed. Uh, he also says that someone had taken a big old dump right <laughs> where the monolith had been. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's Elon Musk and his cyber truck. Yeah. <laughs> it's so big. So amazing of a truck, it can fit a monolith in the back. Yeah. And I took a crap there just to make sure that everyone knew it was me. It does look a lot like the Cybertruck. Yeah. But stainless steel is stainless steel. So who took it? Was it Elon Musk? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Probably not. Uh, but uh, we don't know who took it or who took the dump, at least currently. Yeah. Maybe it was some greedy collector who wanted it all to themselves. Maybe it's going to pop up on like Christie's yeah. uh, like for resale soon. Uh, maybe it was someone hoping to sell it to the highest bidder. I mean, this thing's got international acclaim. It's got to sell for more than that banana. The thing is, it's a very simple design. Like anyone with a metal it's just sheet could metal. make it. Yeah. yeah. But uh, like I said, it's about the response to it. A banana you can go buy for eight. How much can a banana cost? Ten dollars. A banana tapes the wall of a gallery. <laughs> yeah, but and That's so hard. this has a claim, so yeah. it's therefore worth at least as much as the banana. But I think its value is derived from the fact that it is out in the middle of nowhere. You take it out of its environment, it's just some sheet metal. You see, I think Kanye West took it. And he's going to put it back in another area in the middle of nowhere in Wyoming, though. I mean, that'd be interesting if this thing just kept popping up. All yeah, and random, <laughs> random spots. Yeah. Uh, it could have been Native Americans, though, who were mad about seeing their land desecrated. That could have been it. Yeah, they weren't too happy about it. No, or maybe it was a rogue Utah public safety uh, official who wanted that thing gone and didn't feel like dealing with whatever red tape might actually be involved. Mm -hmm. Uh, we may never know where the monolith went, but it, it was a fun story to follow in an otherwise pretty depressing year. Like, it was a week yeah, of just being fun. like, you know, hey, I wonder what's up with the monolith today. Yeah, yeah. it was like, it was basically this year's uh, Storm Area 51, though yeah. much, much smaller in scale. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, just a fun thing for people around the world to uh, you know, think about together and yeah. not have to worry about anything else. The, my only wish is that it could have remained around for at least three or four more weeks and been decorated like a Christmas tree. That would have been nice. I mean, yeah, Christmas trees are, uh, they're dangerous. 
They're flammable. Mm -hmm. Why not put up a nice Christmas rod, <laughs> Christmas monolith? Yeah. Yeah. It's like the Festivus pole. Yeah, the Festivus pole, but like <laughs> if Elon Musk designed it. Yeah. So anyways, uh, farewell, monolith, and thank you for blessing our lives wherever you are. Yeah. In other news now, here's an update on a story from a few weeks ago about how COVID-19 outbreaks at mink farms in Denmark had gotten so out of hand that the Danish government decided to just go ahead and kill all of the roughly 15 million minks in the country. Pretty fucked up, but uh, also all those minks were going to be slaughtered for their fur anyway. Yeah. Uh, and for whatever reason, it turns out minks are just really, really good at catching and spreading coronavirus. And letting that continue to happen could result in humans contracting a mutated version of the virus that the vaccines currently in development wouldn't work on. So had to be done, I guess. So over the last month or so, there has been a mink genocide happening in Denmark with the tiny bodies of the weasel-like creatures being dumped into mass graves by tractors. So that's that. Or <laughs> apparently not, because over the past week, we've gotten news headlines like this one from USA Today. Dead minks infected with a mutated form of COVID-19 rise from graves after mass culling. Or this headline from The Guardian. Culled mink rise from the dead to Denmark's horror. My God. Uh, so <laughs> that's a lot, right? What the hell's going on here? Has coronavirus officially mutated into a zombie virus that reanimates its victims as mindless killing machines hell-bent on consuming human flesh? At this point, whatever. Seems about right. The minks are finally going to get their comeuppance. Yeah, except no, that's not what's happening. Which is good. I mean, it's exciting to hear that. It's like, hey, zombies, sure. Check that off of your uh, checklist. But it's yeah. not zombies, and that's a good thing, because that would be bad. Uh, turns out that Denmark, they kind of rushed through the whole mass culling thing, and they failed to consider the fact that um, the bodies of dead mammals can get pretty bloated as they decompose and release gases, and uh, dumping tens of thousands of minks into a single mass grave and covering it with just about a, a meter of dirt resulted in the minks at the top of the pile being pushed up by the gases of the minks below them, and in some cases, breaking through the dirt and appearing as if they had risen from the dead. Mm -hmm. So, no, there aren't actually zombie minks, but... This is still a huge problem considering these minks are riddled with COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Just a COVID-19 gas cloud. Yeah. Uh, they might attract scavenger animal, animals that spread the disease. And also, at least a few of these burial sites are near lakes and, you know, underground water reserves, which would, of course, prompt fears of contamination. So now they're deciding whether to dig them up and rebury them properly or dig them up and just incinerate them. Uh, and on top of all of that, it came out a few weeks back that the original order to cull all the minks didn't actually have a legal basis, which prompted the Minister of Agriculture to resign in shame. Yeah, this whole uh, mink situation in Denmark, it's, uh, it's front page news over there. Yeah. It's a scandal. Well, at least they, at least shame still works in Denmark. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice seeing officials resign from their jobs oh, when they fuck up. You know up. what? I fucked up. And I'm going to take oh. credit for it. Yeah. I shouldn't be doing this anymore. Yeah. See ya. Anyways, uh, so that's the minks' current situation. If they do, in fact, rise from the dead, we'll let you know. Mm -hmm. But let's move on now to some, uh, some sporting news. Uh, here in the Sport. U.S., that's currently mostly just like NFL and college football and MLS soccer, all of which have been dealing with just constant COVID-19 issues, including the Denver Broncos having to play without a real quarterback on Sunday and getting just destroyed. They had to just call up one of their receivers, have him do the throwing. I, th I know they lost, but I don't think it was by that much. It was bad. I mean, it was by a lot, but they scored a, a, a couple points. Well, yeah. anyway, it's all kind of a bummer. Um, so I, let, let's look overseas at sports in another country, one that isn't currently being completely ravaged by a pandemic. Uh, let's look at South Korea. Uh, Korea's professional baseball league, the KBO, recently had their championships. And the NC Dinos defeated the Doosan Bears to be this year's championship. That's who we were rooting for back in, like, April. Yeah. Remember? Back mm -hmm. at the beginning of COVID when Americans on Twitter were like, well, I need, I need sports. sports. So uh, which, which Korean team are we rooting for, guys? And the Dinos was the one they chose because of their mascot, which is... Uh, his name is like Swole Buddy or something. Just yeah. the, the Swole Brontosaurus. And people from America, they can relate to NC. They're like, oh, I'll just call them the North Carolina Dinos. It's <laughs> yeah. easy. 
Uh, to the delight of many non-Koreans, uh, upon the Dino's victory, the team was presented with this comically large sword, uh, which the players then lifted into the air triumphantly. I mean, this is so much cooler than anything that we've got here. The MLB Commissioner's Trophy is just a bunch of tiny metal flags in a circle. The NBA has a golden basketball on a pedestal. And the NFL has the same thing, but it's a silver football. Boring. Eh. The MLS and NHL, uh, they at least have huge cup trophies that players can drink beer or champagne out of, which is pretty cool, but it's still not as cool as a giant fucking sword. And I don't know how we're just now finding out about this, but uh, maybe it's because of the coronavirus and everyone being a little more yeah. interested in other country sports. Well, okay, actually, despite American social media talking about this sword as if it is the KBO's championship trophy, uh, the actual trophy is this thing. Mm. This is a pretty typical looking sports trophy. Uh, the sword is a totally new thing and is actually a gift that the Dino's owners, NC Soft, made for the team in case they want. Uh, NC Soft is a Korean video game company who makes a popular MMO called Lineage, and one of the most prized in-game items in Lineage is the Execution Sword. This sword, given to the Dinos, is a very expensive real-life replica of the Execution Sword, and it's basically meant to promote the game for fans watching the championships on TV. Yeah. Uh, I don't think they let... I, th I think there's still empty stands there. But, uh, you know, there's no reason that the KBO or any other league can't just, like, follow NCSoft's league, uh, lead and uh, actually make championship swords a thing. I mean, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Looks a lot cooler than just holding up a fucking trophy. The, the Sounders used to be sponsored by Xbox, and they could have handed out a gigantic chainsaw gun from Gears of War. Yeah. Would have been amazing. The championship gun. <laughs> yeah. Would have been sick. Yeah. Would have been great. And it just fires blanks. Or the championship <laughs> like, Master Chief helmet. Yeah, exactly. A golden helmet. And they, they drive a warthog out onto the field and just do donuts in it. Yeah. Why not have fun? Well, someone it? stands in the back and shoots uh, jerseys out at the crowd. Yeah. Something fun. The Stanley Cup is still my favorite trophy because it's over 100 years old, and it, it started off as just a normal cup, mm -hmm. but because it's so old, they had to keep adding layers to it to mm. print names on it, and now it's like six feet tall. Yeah. It's not really a cup anymore. Gotta say, pretty upset. Uh, speaking of Seattle Sounders, they beat the LAFC, but LAFC, half the team had COVID. Yeah. So, asterisk. We've had enough championships in LA this year. Yeah, just really kind of bummed me out, though. Would have been cool to have three, though. They had... Postpone the game. Wait till Rossi's better. It's fine. Anyways, in other international news, you ever visit fucking Austria? Sorry, that's fucking comma Austria. YouTube, where this this is going somewhere, okay? Yeah. yeah. Despite having uh, th th this village is it's called fucking and it's in Austria. And yeah. Despite having a tiny population of just around a hundred, it's quite the tourist attraction for English-speaking travelers on account of it being a village named fucking. It's been named some variation of fucking for around 1,500 years since the village was founded in the 6th century AD by someone named Faco. Faco. <laughs> what a fun name. But the name became a problem after World War II when British and American soldiers based in nearby Salzburg noticed fucking on a map and started traveling to it to have their pictures taken in front of signs. Fun. Mm -hmm. You know, you're out of war. Yeah. You kind of got to cut loose a little fucking. bit. Fucking. This is hilarious. Mm -hmm. It's the last thing I saw before we got into a real heated battle and uh, died. <laughs> uh, the locals known as fuckingers. Uh, <laughs> why do they just call them fuckers? Uh, I mean, yeah, if it were up to me, they'd be fuckers. Uh, they were initially amused by all of this, uh, having not known the English meaning. But over the years, all the attention has become more and more of an annoyance. Like the lady who lives in the Breaking Bad house. This was yeah, fun at she first. she was into it, and now she, not so much. <laughs> no. So yeah, after 70 years of British and American tourists stopping by to take pictures and laugh and occasionally steal those signs, which aren't cheap, uh, fuckingers or fuckers have officially had enough. And they voted last week to change the village's name starting January 1st. Now, there have previously been pushes to change the name that didn't get enough votes, but it's finally happening. They're changing it after centuries. And the new name? Fugging. <laughs> F-U-G-G-I-N-G. -G -G. What? Fugging. Why? That's so stupid. I don't think that this is better. So it's apparently a better written representation of how the residents actually pronounce the name. Um, it's unclear if the change will be enough to stop foreigners from doing what foreigners do. I don't think it will. Fugging is still a funny word if you're American. Just name it after like some local fauna or something like, like Americans do yeah. when they name neighborhoods. Yeah. Willow. Yeah, I mean, most most neighborhoods in, like, 
Southern California, at least, they, I feel like they just consult a, a book. They just yeah, they, they just like um, what's the local trees? Uh, oak, yeah, maple well, oak, oakwood, maple creek. Yeah, I don't give a shit. There's no maples nor creeks in this neighborhood. It's Maple Creek. Yeah, exactly. Uh, White Oak Lane. There it's, we go. It's Mad Libs with nature. Yeah, shit. just do that. That's what Americans do. Yeah, I don't. I don't do that in Austria. So yeah, it's fugging. Fucking is now fugging. <laughs> And uh, now everyone in that, that village, when, you know, they're hitting on each other, hey, you want to go fug? Dumb. Yeah. Anyway, there's, uh, there's still no news from the nearby villages of Oberfucking and Unterfucking, whether they plan on changing their names. But, uh, yeah, if you, there's still those towns if you want to go out of your way in the middle of kind of nowhere in Austria and uh. stand in front of a sign and be like, <laughs> check it out. Yeah. Uh, moving on to influencer news, though. Jake Paul is now 2-0 in the boxing ring, having knocked f- uh, former NBA player Nate Robinson the fuck out at a pay-per-view on Saturday night. That was, I like, you don't see those kind of knockouts in boxing as much he anymore. He sleep. Yeah. <laughs> he fucking fell on his head. Like, I, I'm kind of worried that was, about And it was like uh, two kind of, he was knocked around first, and then 10 seconds later, just boom. Yeah. The, the There was a one edit going around of him... Uh, in his like most famous dunk contest, and he just goes up like as soon as it hits the basket, it's just blunk. <laughs> There's like so many memes. It's great. Yeah, uh, that's what happens when you bring millennials and Generation Z uh, and welcome them into sporting events with open arms. You're gonna get all this free content out of it. Yeah, it just it's a snowball effect of promotion. Uh, having said that, we spoke about this before we started filming, but like. All of this, including the Tyson fight, is just an exhibition. It might as well be the WWE of boxing. People are getting hit, but it, it means nothing in, like, yeah. there's no sanctions or anything. Yeah, it's just amateur boxing. Promoting it's, That's Apple, all boxing is Social anymore. media apps. Ever since MMA became, like, the fighting sport of the 21st century, like, boxing is just for weird shit like this. Like, Mike Tyson's 100 years old, but he wants to fight, so I guess we'll let him. Whatever. Yeah. And you'll pay for it. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, uh, look, Jake Paul... We got to give it to him. Seems, he knocked that yeah. guy the fuck out. He seems pretty good at this. But he's also still kind of a fucking idiot. I mean, you knew that. And this is even more evidenced by a recent pre-fight interview that he did with the Daily Beast. After asking Jake about his upcoming fight, writer Marlo Stern shifted the conversation over to Jake Paul's various controversies. Let's read from the section of the interview that uh, gave it its headline. And that, and that is, Jake Paul believes COVID is a hoax and 98% of news is fake. All right. So I'll be, uh, I'll be the writer Marlo Stern here. Okay. I gotta say, I saw all this stuff over the summer, and it did piss me off a little bit. You were hosting these giant maskless parties at your home in Calabasas as COVID cases were spiking in the state, and it drew a bunch of neighbor complaints and condemnation from the mayor. And when Insider asked you about it in late July, you said, I personally am not the type of person who's going to sit around and not live my life. Do you regret those comments, and are you still living by that mentality? Yeah, I mean, it's time for us to open up. Obviously, it's a controversial subject, but it's time for our nation to open up and go back to normal. You really think that? Yeah, 100%. There are people losing jobs. There are small businesses who are going bankrupt. There are millions of people who are unemployed right now. People are turning to alcohol and drugs to cope with everything that's going on. This is the most detrimental thing to our society. COVID cases are at less than 1%. I I think the disease is a hoax. (laughs) You think the disease is a hoax? It's killed about 260,000 people so far this year. Uh, yeah, and so has the flu. No, the flu has only killed a fraction of that, and we also have a vaccine for the flu. Okay. The flu kills between 20,000 and 70,000 people a year, and we have a mass-produced vaccine for it. Don't we have a vaccine for COVID? Not yet. They're hopeful we will soon. It's been approved by the FDA based on early-stage trials, but it hasn't been introduced to the market yet. So they're hopeful that there will be a vaccine out very soon, although distribution also poses a big problem. But I want to talk about why you think COVID is a hoax. I don't have to elaborate. You don't want to elaborate on that? (sighs) No. (laughs) Sounds like they interviewed my dad. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Yeah, it's it's a long interview, and it's just like, it's a a really interesting look into this guy's mind. Like, he, they they get really hostile towards the end. Jake Paul starts, like, accusing him. He's like, so you just just did this interview with me to, like, you know, pick a fight with me and point out, and he's like, we started this interview by talking for 10 minutes about, like, boxing and why you love it and, like, stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, do you want me to not address, like, all these other newsworthy things? It's like, I don't know, man. You're just trying to do some gotchas. <laughs> I'm literally asking you about things that you yeah. did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was wild. Why are you making me look bad by repeating things that I've done and said? Yeah. He, by the end of the interview, he's, like, being kind of a fucking dick to this writer. But, uh, yeah, anyways... 
Jake Paul, he ended up accusing Marlo Stern of just straight up like misquoting him, like he called it fake news. Yeah. And then Marlo Stern posted the audio from the interview showing that he absolutely wasn't misquoted. Um, and then Jake went and knocked the shit out of Nate Robinson. So, so all of this is in the past and yeah. no one cares about it yeah. anymore because everyone's like, damn, he really knocked that guy out. Yeah. But um, in other celebrity news, in more positive, fun celebrity news, You've probably heard the meme where it's like advice on how to be successful in some way, but step one is always just be attractive. Well, George Clooney, a very attractive man, mm -hmm. gave an interview recently on CBS News Sunday morning that is possibly the strongest evidence ever that you can do something in a totally wrong and stupid and ill-advised way and still have it work out for you if you follow step one and be attractive. Here's the clip. And have you been cutting your own hair? Mm. I've been cutting my own hair for... 25 years. So it has nothing to do with quarantine. No. Look, I have my hair is like really like straw, you know, and so it's easy to cut. You can't really make too many mistakes. So years ago, uh, I bought a, a thing called a Flowbee, which when we you were did kid, not. when I was a kid, yeah. The infomercial, the yeah, Flowbee. This ingenious device lets you give yourself and family perfect haircuts every time. Yes. It comes with the vacuum cleaner yes. and the clippers. Yeah, I still have it. Stop it. You don't I, use it. My haircuts take literally Two minutes. I go. Is, is, th th is this Floby? Yeah, it's Floby. That is awesome. <laughs> yeah, listen, man, it works. I'm not gonna lie. Made me want to buy a Floby. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. I think he is known for pranks. He yeah. is like one of the most notorious pranksters in Hollywood. So this could be a prank. This could be him trolling uh, the interview lady. It wouldn't put it past but me like, though. Like it. Here's the thing. Eighty percent of the time, George Clooney's working. When he's at work, yeah. he has a professional hairstylist, right. doesn't have to worry about it. When he's at home, he doesn't want to go out and get his hair cut or anything. But he's still... You put the Floby in, he doesn't care what people think of him. He's George fucking But Clooney. he still looks good. That's the like, thing. <laughs> it looks great on him. Yeah. And definitely back in the 90s when he bought it, he wasn't like uber rich yet. Yeah. He still had those fake teeth, or he still had those uh, natural teeth that look bad. Yeah. Before he got those chompers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he look, they look good. Those Hollywood chompers. He's the, he's like one of the only men that I've interviewed where I was like blushing looking at him. I was like, you are, you are an attractive man, he is, sir. He is extremely handsome. It was him and Channing Tatum paired, and I was just like, ugh. God. I was like, whoa. I, I had butterflies I going. feel hideous. <laughs> yeah, I felt like a piece of I shit. I can feel every pore on my face just leaking oil all over my skin. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was an intense interview. I was like, there is a vibe about them <laughs> that's just charming as hell. Yeah. Uh, anyways, and, and while we're playing clips, um, let's just give you this one. Uh, here's the president talking about big, massive dumps on the phone with Fox News' Maria Bartom Romo. It was 10 o'clock, and you looked at the numbers, and I'm sure you felt that way. This election was over, and then they did dumps. They call them dumps, big, massive dumps uh, in Michigan and Pennsylvania and uh, uh, all over. Yeah. Big dumps. Huge dumps. They, uh, the GOP is wonderful at providing out of context sound clips. Come. <laughs> That's still a good one. Yeah. Um, yeah. So he's still fighting it. Seems, seems to have really just, I think we, he, he's near the end of Did you all see, of his legal options here. It was like, I think it was on like a Thanksgiving or whatever, where everyone started just like randomly digging up like super old, really weird tweets from Don Jr. Yeah. That was great. It's like, fellas, when the wife's pregnant, like she's got those big fucking tits, am I right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I can't, I, you know what? It's been a couple years since Michael Jackson died and, you know, I always had a great time yeah, playing around like, with him. I used to play video games with Michael Jackson when, when I was like six years old. <laughs> Yeah, All right, buddy. He, he's got a lot of weird old ones. Yeah. Anyways, before we get to the headlines part of the show, this episode is sponsored by Mack Weldon. I am fully decked out right now, 100% Mack Weldon. There you go. Um, this Black Friday, if you're on the hunt for men's essentials for yourself or as a gift, the only place you need to shop is Mack Weldon. Right now, Mack Weldon is offering an exclusive all-black pack, which includes a t-shirt, underwear, and socks inside of a packable backpack. The All Black Pack comes with more than $150 worth of products, but on Black Friday, you can get them for just $98. You've heard us talk about Mack Weldon a bunch, but we love them, obviously, especially their Ace Sweatpants and Sunday Lounge Pants, which have definitely been our go-to pants for this very unusual year. 
But we love all their men's essentials, their socks, shirts, hoodies, underwear, polos, active shorts, you name it. They're all comfortable as hell and fit great. Mack Weldon's men's essentials look great and they feel great. From working out, going out, going to work, or going on a date, Mack Weldon is for everyday life. They use a wide range of customized fabrics that can keep up with you no matter what your day looks like. And with Weldon Blue, their totally free loyalty program, level one gets you free shipping for life. And once you reach level two by spending $200, you get 20% off every order for the next year. Mack Weldon wants you to be comfortable, so if you don't like your first pair of underwear, you can keep them and they still refund you, no questions asked. Uh, to grab your exclusive all-black pack for just $98, while supplies last, visit MacWeldon.com slash weird and enter promo code weird. You'll get 20% off your first order. Uh, that's MacWeldon.com slash weird, promo code weird for 20% off and uh, the all-black pack for $98. Uh, use that 20% to your advantage and stock up because you're going to love this stuff, and the next time you buy it, you're not going to have that code. Yeah. And I've done that so many times. I'm just like, man, I really want more. Now I don't get the discount. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, you get up to the blue, and you'll be fine. But uh, check them out. Mack Weldon, reinventing men's basics. And this episode is sponsored by HelloFresh. Get fresh, pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door with HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh lets you skip those trips to the grocery store and makes home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. HelloFresh is easy and stress-free. The recipes are easy to follow with simple steps and pictures to guide you along the way. HelloFresh cuts out the stressful meal planning and grocery store trips so you can enjoy cooking and get dinner on the table in about 30 minutes. And HelloFresh is flexible for your lifestyle. Easily change your delivery days or meal plan preferences and skip a week whenever you need, right in the app. And depending on your appetite, you can keep your fridge stocked by adding extra meals, proteins, quick meals like breakfast on the go, or 10-minute lunches, and even desserts to satisfy that sweet tooth. Like, uh, again, guys... Things are getting bad out there. Uh, LA is locking down as of Monday. Yeah. So it's actually so convenient to have these meals delivered to your door and you can get fresh stuff to cook for yourself. It works out in every aspect and yeah. I highly recommend it. It's not safe to go out right now. So <laughs> let the meals come to you. Yeah. Uh, go to HelloFresh.com slash WeeklyWeird90 and use code WeeklyWeird90 to get $90 off including free shipping. Again, that is $90 off including free shipping by going to HelloFresh.com slash WeeklyWeird90 and using code WeeklyWeird90. All those links and yeah. information are right below in the description. Check those out. I had some very tasty meatballs from them recently. Mm. It was like ginger. Asian, I love, Asian I love their ginger bowls. meatballs. Love their bowls. Yeah. Fantastic. And quick. 15, 20 minutes. Very quick. Anyway, let's move on now to the headlines half of the show. Starting with negative reviews for scented candles rise along with COVID-19 cases. This is so depressing. This is horrifying. All Sir, this it's like a Yelp review. We're like, the food is so bland. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder if that's happened as well, like with uh, restaurants, because yeah. it's like, yeah, someone did some data visualization analysis. It's like the average review of the top five scented candles on Amazon all just gradually dipped right along yeah. with the COVID cases. And it's like all these comments that just like, these candles used to be so much more fragrant. What the hell happened? It's like, Lady, sir, uh, have you checked your temperature recently? Sir, you should call a doctor. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, have you seen all the videos that have been popping up uh, on Twitter and I guess TikTok or whatever where people just gather up the most hideous stuff they can find. They're like, I've always wanted to do this. And they just bite in and eat an entire onion because they can't taste anything. Uh, they drink like lemon juice and hot sauce. They're just like, yeah, can't taste anything. Send me suggestions. Do they for what know to they eat. have COVID? Yes. Okay. Yes. Still like... Well, they're getting content out of it. I mean, if they're young enough, their stomach can probably handle it. It's like, I... Yeah, that's all the comments are like, yeah, you might not taste it, but buddy, you're going to have yeah, a bad time in the toilet. Like, it's like, I love the taste of spicy food, but everything below here in my body, not so much. Increasingly dislikes it. Yeah. So um, be careful. Just because just your mouth can handle it doesn't mean... The rest of you can. Your stomach and your butthole can handle it. Yeah. Well, I'm sure they learned their lesson. Uh, oh, moving on. Tennessee firefighter mistaken for burglar resigns after fire station sex act with Alabama man. Alabama yeah. man. Alabama man. Roll Tide. Yeah, this this firefighter man, he uh, he was dressed up as a lady and the cop driving past the fire station was like, those don't look like firefighters. Looks like a break in. Came and like apprehended the Alabama man, but couldn't find the lady. And then this firefighter popped out. He's like, oh, hi, officer. Uh, you need any help? Uh, oh, you, you saw someone in here? Let me let me assist you. But then after like 10 minutes, it became clear that the the firefighter helping the cop was, uh, was actually, he had run away and like changed out of the dress he really quick. Got caught in a pair of lace panties hanging out of his pocket. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's, 
That had to have been an interesting day of fighting crime for that cop. And uh, a very awkward day for everyone else involved. I mean, don't fuck at work, but like, come on. Really? Yeah, I think it was the the workplace uh, yeah. sex that probably did them in. Yeah. Well, get a hotel. Or whatever. Get a motel. Get off property. You know, you can legally sleep overnight on Bureau of Land Management land. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Erect a monolith thank, while you're there. Thank you, BLM. Yeah. Recount in Wisconsin County demanded by Trump increases Biden's margin. Uh, Rake. Step. Smack. No, recount them. Trust me. Do it again. You're going to want to recount those votes. Sir, you lost even uh, harder. Re, re, recount them. It's like uh, the, the guy that got knocked out by Jake Paul asking to see the replay. <laughs> wow, he got me good. Yeah, I guess he did. Uh, when you're living it, it out. doesn't seem like he hit you so hard. But when you watch the replay, wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's, oh God, just like, they, uh, I mean, people love Trump and his, his, his whole world. Regardless, they are unconditional fans of Donald Trump. But this has just been pathetic. Yeah. The last couple of weeks have been pathetic. Just, just setback after setback after setback. I want to accomplish. Like, At this point, like they have, they're running out of options now. They're just like, trust the plan. Like it's going to go to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court's going to. Supreme gonna Court's run. like, nope. Yeah, the Supreme Court's like, uh, no. Like this is not how the American legal system works. Like mm -hmm. you actually have to. Like, you can't just bring something. It is funny, though, that like every single day there's a headline about one of these things getting tossed out of a higher and higher court. Yeah. And it's all fucking Republican judges. Yeah. This is too ridiculous even for oh them. Oh, my God. All the stuff that's happening in Georgia, even since the last time we brought it up, it, it's just getting funnier and funnier. They are turning so hard on Kemp yeah. and everyone else in Georgia. All these Republicans are cucks because they're not like... Oh, stealing the election for us. Reminder, uh, December 7th is the cutoff. I believe it's December 7th. Let's say December 6th, just so you're safe. To register to, to register vote. To vote in, uh, uh, so you can vote in the runoff election. Yeah, definitely uh, check Georgia. your voter registration there. Make I sure it's still good. I don't really trust uh, Brian Kemp and the rest of that state to but, just be like, oh, if you could vote in November, you can obviously vote in January. As funny as it is that the Georgia Republican Party is eating itself, you really need to show up and vote anyway in the runoff election yeah. because it will be the funniest thing that has ever happened if we flip the Senate in a runoff thing and then it gets blamed on Trump by being a big fucking baby for a month straight about the election results. It will be the funniest thing you've ever seen. So please let us laugh. We yeah. need to laugh. It would be a, a hilarious way to flip the funniest the, way. The, the executive and legislative branches completely. Because isn't the one lady a QAnon or two? Kelly Leffler? I don't know if she's a no. Uh, one of the one of the congressional oh, candidates. Oh, okay. Yeah, Kelly Leffler is the one that uh, just made a bunch of money off insider trading. Yeah, but sort of the other guy. Yeah, I mean they're all terrible. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, anyways, <laughs> it would be hilarious if that happened. So please vote if you're in Georgia yeah. and make sure you're registered to vote. And if you just turned 18 like last week, go yeah. register. Yeah. Uh, next headline, Florida man wrestles his puppy from Jaws of Alligator. It's a it's a hard to watch video. Yeah, I don't think that I dog just, looks very stressed. I don't think I can show it because it's probably some like story full shit. Oh, but, uh, for sure. It's a tiny dog. Yeah, it's a very small dog. And like you see this, this dude just like fucking dives into this pond. He's wrestling this alligator and he's just like, yeah, like it fucked me up. My hands were like covered in cuts. I had to get a bunch of shots. Uh, oh, yeah, because you're also in swamp water, too. And, like, the dog had some puncture marks, but he, he saved the dog's life. Like, that dog would have been dead. The pressure that holds those jaws down, though, it's, like, it's yeah. insane. The, the guy, he definitely had adrenaline going, just prying that oh, shit. Oh, yeah. No, it's, he it's, loved that damn tiny dog. He did. I mean, uh, reminds me, like, one of my parents' tiny dogs died, like, two months ago. Super old. Mm -hmm. But they have an even older tiny dog, uh, Jack, who's, like, 16 or something like right now mm -hmm. he almost died again last week but then he turned out like they're like his kidneys are failing like you know say your goodbyes and then like the next day they're like ah no he's fine and he's had like three run-ins like he one time he got like stung by a bee and had an allergic reaction where they're like ah he's yeah he's probably gonna die. <laughs> he didn't die and another time a fucking bobcat came into the yard when my mom was back there with him and tried to steal him like this alligator did and like she screamed loud enough that the, uh, they dropped the, the tiny fucking dog, but he had, like, teeth marks in it. Yeah, uh, tiny dogs, they, they have a way of surviving. Yeah, they're tough. Tough little things. Yeah. Very loud and shrill, though. Very shrill. Mm -hmm. People can't vacuum or use their doorbell because Amazon's cloud servers are down. 
This was uh, last the, week. What uh, is this vacuum connecting to Wi-Fi bullshit? I don't know. Is all these? Uh, this was like who needs a smart vacuum? I don't know. This was like half a day on last Wednesday or Tuesday, and uh, yeah, just too many appliances have smart functions that have no reason to be there. Like I think maybe for the vacuum, it was like a way to like monitor. Maybe it was like a Roomba type thing. Yeah, it was Roombas. Uh, yeah, which I still don't understand why they need cloud because I don't think the original Roomba used like. I think it probably because you could like run it from your phone at work or something. Oh yeah, that's probably maybe. It. I don't know. Yeah, it was like oh, new filter needed. Just some basic shit like that that you could easily figure out on your own. Just set a reminder. Yeah. Oh, it's been six months. Time to change that. Yeah, like uh, just a bunch of appliances stopped working. Uh, There's some other shit going on that uh, we'll probably talk about on like Tech News Day, but like Amazon has this new thing where it's uh, you have to opt out of it, but it uh, opens <laughs> yeah. up your opens up your uh, Wi-Fi connection to people around you in case yeah. theirs fails so that their Amazon products can still work. Yeah, like by by buying Ring products, you're opting into this like municipal like <laughs> Wi-Fi system yeah. that you're, you're creating a mesh Wi-Fi yeah. for everything Amazon yeah. within miles. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Well, opt out of that. Mm -hmm. North Korean gymnast defects by vaulting fences. That's literally the joke people made about the wall at the border here. Yeah. This. I, I wish there was video of it. Like this person, they because they had to have jumped over the border fence on the North Korea side, and then done a bunch of fucking gymnastics to get through a literal minefield, and yeah. then on the American side, hopped over the fence again. American side. Yeah, or the, uh, sorry, the South Korean side, which I believe has American troops there. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So they had to go like, through the DM, what is it, the DMZ? DMZ? Yeah. Yeah, which you don't want to be walking through the DMZ. I guess I guess if you're a gymnast, you can, you know, improve your chances by leaping and No, well, you got to do, like, the floor routine where the, 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 the soldiers are just enamored. Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> Holy shit. What the fuck? Got to blow their minds. Yeah. Yeah, give them the old razzle-dazzle. Mm-hmm. It's the razzle dazzle is very effective. Yeah, landmines don't go off if you got moxie. Yeah, exactly. And razzle dazzle. Wyoming's governor contracts coronavirus after condemning mask mandates in favor of personal responsibility. Leopards eating their faces. Yeah, I guess I guess he should have been more personally responsible. Yeah, it sounds like he was kind of an asshole. Yeah, just wasn't responsible at all. Doesn't reflect well on your leadership when you have such poor personal responsibility that you catch a virus that you yourself said. Uh, is a personal choice, essentially. Yeah. So, uh, cool. I've been, doing, I've been doing, talking out loud at the grocery store. At the, I went to the grocery store today. This mm -hmm. guy had the dick nose. In a, it's like on the aisle, and I was talking to my wife. I was like, all right, let's get off this aisle. It's getting too crowded, and this guy's not wearing his mask right. Like, didn't even acknowledge him. Just walked away, but said it completely out loud. Made me feel good. Maybe he fixed it. Maybe he didn't. I left. Yeah. But uh, Maybe he got real mad. He, could, he probably he's, He was an older, taller gentleman, so... Yeah. He, he probably could have kicked my ass, but probably. he didn't. No, he put the mask up, clapped, and then saluted me. And gave you $100. <laughs> and then he called Barack Obama and said, yeah. you'll never believe what happened. Yeah. <laughs> I was in the wrong. And Albert Einstein was there for some reason. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Uh, Canadian officials warn drivers not to let moose lick their cars. It's a big problem because the, the cars, you're kicking up all that road salt. Mm -hmm. So your car is... Delicious. Delicious to a moose. It's a big moose, salt lick. Moose love their salt. Mm -hmm. And so they'll, they're like, mm, there it is. Delicious. There it is. They'll come up and they'll start licking it. And it's like, you know, it's fine, except you don't want all these meese uh, being attracted the, to, the, uh, to the road. Because, yeah. uh, I mean, it's... You hit it, one of those and you're dead. Yeah, it's, it's for everyone's sake. Like, the moose has a better chance of surviving a car accident than you do. That thing is like thousands of pounds... And, uh, yeah, in the article, like, it was some, some officials just like, yeah, I mean, you hit it with your car, you take the legs out, but that top is going straight through your windshield. You're going to die. Moose are, like, alligators are like dinosaurs. Moose are like dinosaurs. Yeah, every, they're, you, they're one of those things where when you see them on TV, you, you don't grasp the size of yeah, them. Yeah, they are, they are massive. Weird-looking animals, too. They're, they're gigantic. Yeah. Their legs are just basically sticks. Yeah. And they're... They're, they're like short-necked giraffes. Yeah. They're like the size of a fucking elephant. And also, they can swim, like, 10 miles out. Like uh, They're and, very good swimmers. Yeah, and, like, the Great Lakes, people are, like... Every couple months, because they have like, built-in sails. Yeah, they find they <laughs> find a moose just out in the middle of nowhere, just like, mm -hmm. hey, what's up? Just taking a swim. <laughs> no, I don't need any help. Nope, I've got these trusty moose antlers. They they function as a sail. Oh, love moose. Mm -hmm. Sex Pistols star John Lydon bitten by flea on his penis after befriending squirrels. 
Why did he tell everyone this? Because he's John Lydon. Johnny Rotten, all he, he, his entire motivation in life is like being provocative. That's why he's like, he was all big into Trump a few months back. He's like, yeah, Trump's great. I love him. It's like, oh, I, don't yeah, think, yeah. I don't think he actually like believes in fucking anything. He just wants attention? Yeah, that's what he's always been since like back in the day. Now, was this flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers he's talking about? <laughs> Could have been. But uh, I, Johnny Rotten apparently lives in Venice Beach. Nice. Which like... A millionaire. Well, yeah, obviously. Getting those those royalties from... Uh, I don't know if he made that much money from Sex Pistols, but his second band, which is actually much better than Sex Pistols, um, Public Enemy Limited, good mm. shit. I think he made a lot of money uh, off Sex that. Pistols merchandise alone is just like, I'm sure it does very, but, very but well. But I don't him. think... I don't think the Sex Pistols, like any of the members... I'm sure their contracts were shit. It was all Malcolm McLaren, the like manager who mm. formed the band. I think his estate makes most of it. And then like his son, like remember he like burned all their old like assets in a boat for for no reason. Anyway, there's your Johnny Rotten update. He's he's befriending squirrels. They're getting fleas on him. They're biting him on his dick. And he lives in Venice. Yeah, cool. Nice. Intruder poses a statue and failed attempt to evade police at Adelaide building site. I don't think it worked. Yeah, he's just... <laughs> yeah, just just freeze. No, I'm a statue. Oh, fuck! <laughs> Got me! I just love this. Like, what was the... I mean, if you broke into, like, a clothing store or something, I could see it maybe working. But this is a building site. Like, why would there be a statue? Isn't uh, Australia... They have the most famous living statue. The, uh, the country western guy that punches people in the face because they mess with them. Oh, I haven't seen There's that. There's multiple guy. videos of this guy getting fucked with, and he just doesn't take any bullshit mm. and just knocks him. That's pretty cool. I think it's in Melbourne or something. I like the mirror man who hangs out at the Griffith Observatory here in LA. Ever seen he's the covered man? in mirrors? Yeah, he's covered yeah. in mirrors. It's got to be like hot as fuck inside that thing. It's a but, little bit. Uh, yeah. And it's got to be hard to get in and out of that suit. But he looks fucking cool. Mm-hmm. Anyway, final headline another uh, Australia headline. Man pleads guilty over failed robbery in which Canberra cafe owner allegedly pulled larger knife on him. You call that a knife? Yeah, it's basically, it's from, yeah, Crocodile Dundee. He's like, ah, give me your stuff. And he's like, that's not a knife. This is a knife. That's not a knife. That's a machete. And it works, yeah. Mm -hmm. He had the bigger knife. Yeah. And therefore, he won the fight. Life mimics art. So there you go. Well, I hope you had a wonderful time on this weekly weird news. We... Put a pin in the lovely monolith for situation. now. For now, uh, and uh, you know we had a lot of fun along the way. We uh, we we praised and knocked down Jake Paul. Yeah, credit where it's due, but exactly. also very dumb, he spreading dangerous information man. about the virus. <laughs> uh, anyways, that's it for this week's episode. We'll see you very soon for some more episodes as usual. And I uh, hope you had a great holiday weekend. Check out our sponsors. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out our other videos over here. Click both of those. Hey, if you even wa- if you've watched them already, do it again. Do Who it cares? again. They're free. Turn it on, walk away, do something else. (laughs) Just leave a playlist on. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.